Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So it is the Robin Hood Top 10 today. Usually I do that on Friday, but I hit my monetization metrics yesterday. So I was really excited about that, decided to make a video about that instead. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the most popular stocks on Robin Hood from the last week. Now, these are sorted by at the top, the most number of accounts that added that stock to their Robinhood portfolio in the last week. So let's just do a high level overview of what people bought in the last week on Robinhood. Uh, we got Pfizer, a pharmaceutical company. Actually, we have four pharmaceutical companies on this list. We have Pfizer, AZN, iBio, and ABUS. Okay, four pharmaceutical companies. Now, I think uh, that's a play on the vaccine situation. Um, there's, I think there's a lot of hope that, you know, one of these companies is going to develop the, uh, the vaccine we've all been waiting for to get uh, back to business as usual. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a hot stock category right now, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, number two on the list, Tesla. Of course, Tesla has just been on a tear the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's come down a little bit uh, since it came out with uh, earnings a few days ago, which is interesting because I believe the earnings were higher than expected. So it's interesting to see this bit of a pullback in the last few days here. Um, Microsoft, Amazon, obviously two of the largest companies in the world. Uh, so kind of safe plays there. Um, and then we've got Intel. It's the first time I've seen Intel on the list. I think I've been doing this for about two or three months now, uh, every week. First time I've seen Intel. Uh, and then Nikola. Nikola is back on the list. Just a little disappointed to see, to be quite honest with you guys. Um, and then lastly, we've got NAK, which is a, a Canadian gold and copper exploration company, which was interesting to see kind of a mining company on here. Uh, usually when, when I think of, you know, people getting excited about buying gold, which I think is what's happening here, as uh, we're printing more and more dollars in the U.S. to try to deal with our situation, uh, gold people people tend to flock to gold when you know there's a lot of money printing. It tends to be a, a hedge against inflation. But you know the way I think about it is is people either buying gold or buying uh, a company that tracks gold. This is a gold mining company, so it's you know, more of a long shot, in my opinion, certainly, than, than just buying gold. So it's interesting to see that one on there. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe gold isn't the reason that people are buying this company. But so that's that's who's in the top 10. Uh, and now I just want to give a quick high-level uh, summary of my filters. So these, these different categories here, Mainly super investors, earnings yield, return on invested capital, and VIC, which is Value Investors Club, are some of the high-level filters I use uh, in order to decide if I even want to look further with a given company. Uh, if it doesn't kind of pass those filters, I'm done. So um, let's get into that. First, you know, price to earnings ratio tends to be an indicator of how cheap uh, stock is selling for or, or a business is selling for. It's really what you're paying now compared to what the earnings are now. So price per share divided by earnings per share. And it really gives you a sense of you know how much bang you're getting for your buck right now. Okay. You know what what are you laying out now for the stock versus what is that partial ownership in the business going to earn you in the next year? Um, or in this case, in the last year. Uh, super investor. So this is one of my favorite uh, filters. Uh, Data Roma is a website that aggregates all of the holdings of the best investors. Okay, 
Uh, these are U.S. investors. Um, and the, the most interesting thing about looking at these, these uh, data Roma is you can see what investors have bought recently. Okay. Um, and, you know, Monish Pabrai talks about one of his, one of his big investing strategies is shameless cloning. Okay. So looking at what great investors have bought recently and kind of using that to um, come up with stocks that might be worth looking into. Okay. These are companies that have already been vetted by these fantastic investors, investors who have you know, managed to compound money over decades. Um, and so it can be a great way to screen companies. Uh, if, if a super investor has not said, hey, I'm going to put my money on this, on this horse, uh, it might be a good idea for us to avoid putting money on that horse. Um, so you can see how many super investors own these different companies. Earnings yield. Uh, this I really got from Joel Greenblatt, who's a hedge fund manager for about, I think, 20 years. Uh, incredible track record. They did about 40% annualized returns for 20 years. Um, and he wrote a book called The Little Book That Beats the Market. He wrote a book called You Can Be a Stock Market Genius. Uh, and they're both fantastic books. Uh, really cheesy titles, obviously, but fantastic books. Uh, so earnings yield is his metric to kind of get a sense for how cheap a business is, okay? Uh, and then return on invested capital is one of his other favorite metrics, and that's a measure of how good a company is. Uh, and I've done videos kind of explaining both of these terms and how to calculate them, earnings yield and return on invested capital. So if you want to check those out, just search, you know, in my YouTube channel for, for these terms. Um, so that's how cheap a business is and how good a business is. And when you combine those two, uh, you can find businesses that are both cheap and good. Uh, that's, you know, what the magic formula is based on, which is Joel Greenblatt's um, kind of automatic way of investing, picking stocks, based on the formula uh, and setting it and forgetting it. Uh, and then Value Investors Club here is um, another site that was started by Joel Greenblatt. Sorry, my, uh, my video went out, so let's get that back. Uh, Value Investors Club, it's, it's a club where great investors submit investment ideas and there's a, a panel that basically says, all right, you know, if I were in graduate, a graduate program uh, with, with business students, uh, only uh, write-ups that would get like a 98% a or higher by Joel Greenblatt get accepted into the Value Investors Club. So those are the only ones that we can see, all right? So, you know, if, if you're considering investing in a company, say, say Tesla, uh, it's awesome to go to Value Investors Club and check out that write-up. See what, you know, some really smart investor uh, wrote up about the company, what, what they think that stock is going to do over the next couple of years. And they break down their whole investment thesis. So it's really a great exercise for learning how to value companies better, uh, learning how to decide if a company is worth investing and reading these investment write-ups. So that's Value Investors Club. Now what I've done here is I've basically given the date, the month and year of the most recent write-up, and then what the price was when that write-up was done. Okay. Um, so just to get a sense, less than a year ago, there was a, a smart investor that said, hey, Tesla might be worth buying right now. And the price was $234 per share when that investor wrote that up. Obviously, you know, it's gone up like six times since then. So, you know, that, that investor deserves some credit. Obviously, you know, it's, it could have been luck, right? It's hard to decipher in investing between luck 
and skill. Really, the only way to do that is to have, you know, a decade or more track record, ideally through multiple dips in the market, in order to be able to gauge whether uh, the performance of an investor is based on luck or based on skill. Okay. Um, but anyway, I digress. So let's go through some of these. Uh, Pfizer, you know, pretty good. Seven super investors own Pfizer. Uh, the price to earnings ratio, you know, it's okay. It's not super compelling to me. The earnings yield at 5.5%, not that interesting. Uh, and return on invested capital, I like to see, you know, 20% or higher in return on invested capital. So, you know, Pfizer, based on these initial metrics, isn't that interesting to me. I don't really invest in pharmaceutical companies anyway. Uh, number two, Tesla. So one super investor does own it. I believe they bought it in the first quarter of 2020. So, you know, Tesla is kind of breaking through that super investor. Um, it's uh, hitting the big time. And obviously there's talk about Tesla joining the S&P 500. So it'll be really interesting to see how that uh, impacts the, the price of, of shares of Tesla. You know, it's not really earning money yet. It's earning a tiny bit of money, but compared to the price of shares, you know, it would just kind of be a nonsensical price to earnings ratio at this point. Um, like I said, it's just gone crazy over the last year, up like six times. So that's Tesla. You know, I, personally, I'm, I'm interested in Tesla. It's got to probably be sub $400 per share. So if it gets back to that, I'll dig deeper into it, but you know, right now it's just silly pricing to me. So anyway, uh, then we got this UK pharmaceutical company, pretty big pharmaceutical company, 146 billion market cap. And just so you guys know, market cap is really just the shares outstanding times the, the market price. Um, very high price to earnings ratio. Uh, one super investor owns it. Not much to show here. You know, I have no interest in, in uh, this company based on these numbers here. iBio, a pretty small company, 700 million market cap. And there's just nothing. There's just nothing to, for me to be interested in based on uh, these numbers or lack of numbers. Uh, Microsoft, you know, obviously one of the biggest companies in the world. Price to earnings ratio 35, that is high. That is high for me. 3.4% uh, earnings yield. So at, if, if this company earns the same amount of money moving forward, this essentially means it's gonna take 33 years for me to make, for me to earn my money back from my ownership in the business, okay? Uh, obviously, people think the company is going to grow, but keep in mind, it's already a huge company and it's really hard for huge companies to grow at, at any kind of significant rate. So, you know, uh, a great business is, is not a great investment at any price. And I think that Microsoft is on the expensive end right now. You got a, a write-up value investors club from almost two years ago. The stock has almost doubled in those two years. So that's that's really good for people who bought in two years ago. Amazon, another, you know, incredibly large company, just an insane price to earnings ratio. People are so optimistic about what Amazon is going to do moving forward uh, as if they can do no wrong. And uh, when you're paying prices based on, you know, that kind of uh, optimism around a company, uh, it's, it's a little scary, guys. There's, to me, there's a lot more downside when you're paying nosebleed prices like this than there is upside. Um, I would be interested in, to own Amazon. Uh, definitely not at $3,000 per share. It would have to come down at least half 
for me to be interested uh, in buying Amazon. You know, lots of super investors, obviously, in, in Microsoft and Amazon. Everyone knows they're great businesses. Uh, but you got to make sure you pay the right price. Earnings yield super low, less than 1%. Uh, and obviously, it's it's gone up quite a bit, uh, in even since March. I mean, this was March 2020. It was $1,785 per share. So it's up, what, like 75%. Since March in the last four months, so that's very impressive for a company that's that large. Intel uh, price to earnings ratio not bad, not bad. Eleven for uh, for a technology company. Five super investors own it. Earnings yield eleven percent. That's that's you know starting to get me interested actually. Uh, return on invested capital approaching 20%. So these are the kinds of numbers I like to see in earnings yield and return on invested capital. Uh, anything over 10% on earnings yield, uh, anything near 20% or higher on return on invested capital, not bad. Uh, there's no write-up. If there was a write-up on this one, I would probably be diving in to Intel. Um, but... You know, I'm not. I'm not going to dive into Intel. I'm actually really digging into Micron, which, you know, I think is a little bit of uh, potentially overlap with with Intel. So, you know, I'm I'm not digging into Intel. But you know, it's, it, I I can't fault certainly I can't fault investors for being interested in Intel based on these numbers. Uh, ABUS, pharmaceutical company, very small. Smallest company on the list, 300 million market cap. Um, doesn't check any of my boxes. Nikola. So Nikola, you know, $10 billion market cap. I think when, when, the, um, when the analysts were originally looking at Nikola to do the merger, or the reverse merger, uh, they estimated that Nikola was worth around $3 billion, okay? Uh, so based on the current share price, Nikola, the market cap is almost $11 billion. So even though it's come down a lot since, you know, it really shot up, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I think it was up to like $70 or $80 per share. Uh, it's come down a lot, I still think it's overpriced. Um, but it's interesting to see, you know, people starting to buy back in at this level uh, around $30 a share. Uh, if you want to learn more about Nikola, there's a YouTube channel called Hyperchange. He's done a few videos on Nikola. I think they're really well done. He's a, a very thoughtful investor. Uh, he's done a lot on Tesla, very bullish long term on Tesla one of the biggest diehard Tesla fans I think I've ever come across on YouTube. Um, but he really understands the electric vehicle space. And um, he thinks Nikola is probably a pyramid scheme. So, you know, regardless of what you think, check out his videos because he really tries to be impartial. He tries to be unbiased in his uh, assessments of companies. And I think he does a good job. And finally, we have NAK which is a Canadian gold and copper exploration company in Vancouver. Uh, my guess is it's a play on gold, but um, I don't really know. $900 million market cap doesn't meet any of my, uh, my boxes there. So basically out of these 10, uh, the only one that really intrigues me uh, in any kind of way is Intel. Uh, based on, you know, the, these metrics here. Um, like I said, I, I've got some other companies that, that I'm kind of looking at right now. Seritage Growth Properties, um, Micron, you know, Uber and Facebook are, are still on my radar. You know, if Uber comes down, it's, it's down a little bit. If it comes down probably to around $24, uh, I might start taking some bites out of Uber. Facebook is it's just way too high uh, at the moment, but who knows guys, it'll be interesting to see how things play out over the next couple of months. 
so that's it, guys. Let me know if you are buying or own any of these companies and kind of what, what you see in, in that investment. I'm curious to hear from you. Uh, you know, part of the reason I make these videos is to learn more, right? The best way to learn is by teaching. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot I don't know. Um, much more that I don't know than, uh, than I do know. So I, I appreciate if you guys could help fill in any of these uh, knowledge gaps for me and just let me know, you know, what you're buying and uh, why you're buying it so we can kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. I will see you in the next video. Take care.